Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, visionrecordingstudios.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And this week we're taking a look at the new Universal Audio, along with Soft 2 plug-in of the guitar uh, amplifier, the Marshall Blues Breaker 1962. Uh, this is part of the um, of the, uh, the the Marshall bundle that is a part of UA's new plug-in series, which includes this amp you're looking at, the uh, Silver jubilee from 1987 which i did a review on about a week or so ago go check out the youtube channel as well as the 1959 super plexi lead so all three of those amps come in one bundle package uh, regular price is somewhere around 400 bucks at the recording of this video which is uh what are we in november 2015 but you can always catch them on sale i actually picked up the bundle for 199 dollars when they first released the plug-in so you get three of the most sought after Marshall emulations or Marshall amplifiers of probably the last 50 years, uh, all for the price of anywhere from 200 to 400 bucks, depending on when you purchase it. And if you're a guitar player and you have a universal audio system, I think you would be selling yourself short by not having this in your bundle, especially uh, if you... Um, if you like that Marshall, that classic rock, hard rock sound. And the other great thing about these new Marshall uh, amplifier uh, emulations is that they all have the Unison technology, which if you don't know what that is, go back and watch the Silver Jubilee video. I explain that in a little more depth. Um, and what that basically means in 10 seconds or less is that you can record through these plugins and a host of other Universal Audio plugins uh, in their console software and then print that tone to your DAW of choice. And therefore it sounds and reacts just like a real amplifier. But check out my other videos for more information on that. So let's take a look at the Blues Breaker. So I'm using the same piece of music that I used in some, when I did the um, one on the Silver Jubilee. And I did that for a reason, because I'm sure people are going to go back and they're going to go check out that video. And I want them to compare apples to apples with the same piece of music. It's kind of a, kind of a classic rock, kind of a, you know, one minute piece of music, just uh, drums, bass, and some crunchy guitar chords. Um, so we're going to use the same uh, piece of music for all the Marshall plugins. So if you want to hear what the Silver Jubilee sounds like on the same piece of music go check out that video so here we are the 1962 blues breaker which uh eric clapton made famous on the blues breaker uh albums uh john mallon the blues uh uh what was it the heck's the name of that uh john uh mall and the blues breakers right self-titled out uh, self-titled album from 1966 he was using a 30 watt 212 marshall amplifier and it was soon nicknamed the blues breaker um, and it's um, Eric Clapton made this amplifier famous, or as some people might say, the amplifier made Eric Clapton famous. <laughs> so you decide which is, uh, which is the truth. So anyway, this is a very, very accurate uh, representation of what the original Blues Breaker sounds like. And I happen to know that because I've actually played a, a reissue Blues Breaker um, before. And so I'm pretty familiar with the tone. So when I heard this right away, I said it sounds pretty spot on uh to that amplifier without having the, the amplifier in the room and being able to do a side by side but it sounds awfully authentic and i and it's one of the things i love about what marshall's done here with soft tube or what ua has done with soft tube along with marshall so anyhow here is the top of the amplifier let's walk through the controls if we start on the left hand side we have an on off switch standby which will turn off the LED indicator, as you can see to the right. We have a tremolo on this, which we have a speed and an intensity, okay, which is pretty cool. We have a presence control, bass control, middle, treble, okay, and we have two channels, uh, loudness one and loudness two for the two channels. And then what makes this um, amplifier um, special, um, just uh, like the uh, hardware or the original amp, is that it has um, where, and they do this on the Plexi as well, where a lot of guitar players will plug in either into channel one or channel two, channel one being the low input, channel two being the high input, and then by using these little patch cables to patch the two channels together, it gives you a bunch of different tonal and gain uh, sonic options, so you can feel free to experiment with that, and we will do that. So that's what makes this uh, amplifier kind of special, and this is what this one of, one of the things this amplifier is known for, is being able to plug in your guitar and then patch the other two, dime the other two together with this little patch cable, he it gets its nice own unique tone. If you come over to the right side here, we have the little channel strip. And as I said in the Silver Jubilee video, what I really like about what Marshall and UA has done with this collection is they give you more than just one uh, sonic tone of 
the Blues Breaker or the Jubilee or the Plexi. By using this little mini mixer and using a combination of different high-end, world-class uh, microphones, you can have a bunch of tonal different, uh, bunch of different tonal options along with you can mix the microphones together, and we'll do that. So that's what kind of makes this a little special, which is different than most other guitar emulation plugins that you see on the market today. Um, and that's what it re I really love about it. So at the top here, you have your UV meters. Okay, you're, you're, you're out. This is um, the main out level. Okay, we have a main output volume here. Okay, that we can adjust and you would adjust this depending on maybe what kind of guitar you're using, so on and so forth. Um, and then we have our cabinet and microphone uh, selection. So we have three sets of microphones. We have a valve set, a FET, and a dynamic set. And we'll go over what those microphones are uh, right now. So if you're on the valve, um, and if you turn it to off here, you bypass the cabinet altogether, okay? So on the valve, we have, um, let's see here. So on the valve microphones here, we have four microphones. We have the U67s, which are Neumann U67s. We have the Coles 4038 microphone, and we have the Telefunken ELAM251 microphone. These these combination of microphones are similar to what's on the Silver Jubilee as well. Um, and again, so these are some of the, the most uh, popular uh, microphones that us, that recording engineers have been using for decades to record rock electric guitar. Okay. And you can go ahead and take each microphone in and out by just clicking on this in button. And you can also pan the microphones. Okay. When you get over to the FET side... Um, we have a different, a little bit of a different combination of microphones. So we're all, we're using again, the U87 by Neumann, which is a little bit brighter sounding than the U67. We're using something new that wasn't part of the Silver Jubilee, the Voodoo VR2, along with, um, in one of the room mic slots. And then we also have in the second room mic slot, the uh, Telefunken ELMA. E-L-A-M-251, okay? Now, when we go over to the dynamics, we have the good old tried and true Shure SM57. Uh, we also have the Coles um, M340, uh, 38M microphone. And then for our first room mic, uh, we are using the, Co uh, excuse me, this is the uh, Sennheiser M380. I'm sorry, I, I, miss, I misspoke. So the second close mic is the Sennheiser uh, M380. The first room mic is the Coles 4038. And then the Telefunken is the second room mic. So by playing, you can, and there will be very different sounds from the dynamic mics to the solid state mics to the, to the tube microphones, and we'll cycle through those. The other thing, um, so the plugin is really simple, very easily laid out. Um, and you can, you know, go ahead and pick your microphone combination and then tweak your EQs and stuff to your heart's content. The other thing what's really great about what UA has done with Softube and Tony Platt is the engineer who recorded uh, all these uh, sounds uh, for the for this uh, particular uh, Marshall bundle. Um, and if you don't know who he is, go look him up on Google. He's the one that engineer recorded all the uh, tracks for the legendary uh, band ACDC's Back in Black, amongst others. So Back in Black is uh, probably known in the rock world as one of the greatest rock albums probably ever recorded and certainly one of the greatest sounding um, good electric guitar rock guitar recordings probably known to man so if not the top in the top two or three uh for sure so tony pla is uh is a legend and he um he helped and worked very closely developing these tones and did all the the actual setup and miking the cabinets and choosing the microphones and so on and so forth so the person that really knows what he's doing <laughs> made these tones, that's for sure. So what he also did is he also helped create a ton of great presets. We're, we're not going to cycle through all of them, but look at all the presets you get. And these presets are very usable. And what I end up doing on all of these uh, Marshall uh, plugins when I'm using them is I just pick up a, a preset that I think sounds close and I just tweak it to taste and that's what we'll do. Um, so these are not just a bunch of run-of-the-mill presets. These were really carefully crafted. And I think you'll find if you use them that they're very, very musical, very, very usable, and certainly can find something that will fit just about any style of music. Okay, so for right now, we're going to keep it on the default setting, okay? And we're going to start off with the valve microphones, and I'm just going to go ahead, and um, this is just what you would pull up the plug in. This is the settings that it would be on. Everything is at 12 o'clock. The tremolo is off. We're in on the low input, input one, um, and we're going to go and just pl play back this piece of music a, a, a few, uh, and listen to it, and then what we're going to do is... Um, Go ahead and I'm going to um, then stop it and we'll listen to one microphone at a time so you can hear the difference. So here we go.
already. You can hear right out of the box just by tweaking the presence, bass, middle, and treble controls, EQ controls that you can make the sounds. It sounds very musical, and it can make the stamp sound completely different. Um, <clears throat> and it has a much different sound that if you go back and listen to the sil watch the Silver Jubilee video, this is a completely different tone, totally different than what you would get from the Silver Jubilee, which is great. It's it's t totally different sounds. You can use these things, and you can use this kind of tone in a variety of different styles of music. So now let's go ahead, now that you kind of heard that a little bit, let's go ahead and let's just start off with the U67 and just play that microphone and see what it sounds like. And again, I'll put everything back kind of at 12 o'clock to be fair. And this amp um, naturally has a little bit more of a warmer tone, a little bit of a darker tone than something like the, the Silver Jubilee does. So let's just play back the, uh, the U67 and then I'll turn that off and turn on the other, well, we have two U67s here, so. So what it sounds like to me without reading the manual is that the first U67 was probably off axis of the cone. It sounds a little bit darker to me, so it probably wasn't on the center of the cone. The seven, the second U67 was probably more dead center on the dust cap. Gets a little bit more of a buzzier sound. And so then you can blend the two together. Now let's take a listen to what just the uh, the the Coles room mic is doing. So now we're just going to blend all four of them together. So those are the valve microphones. over to the FET microphones and see what those sound like. So now we're using U87s, um, which are a little bit different. They should sound a little bit brighter. Let's just see. So not really brighter, but definitely has a different mid-range characteristic. If I'm just cycling between the, the FET and the valve with the room mics being all the way down, we're, psych we're really flipping between two U67s and two U87s, and they do sound completely different. <laughs> So here on the dynamic microphones, we have an SM57 and a Sennheiser M380. And again, the, M, the SM57 doesn't sound as buzzy as it typically does on most other uh, Marshalls. And that's because I believe this Marshall with the speaker that was in this cabinet, which I think is a 65 watt Celestion, <coughs> excuse me, um, has more of a darker, warmer sound to it. So this is just playing with the two close mics without even playing with the room mics. Let's just try to bring in some room mics and see what it sounds like. <laughs> Now we can also play with some EQ. Remember, everything's at 12 o'clock.
That's a nice sound too with the uh, valve microphones once we started playing around with the EQ. So that's what you can kind of deal with. You have three different types of microphones, three very different uh, types of sounds, and by blending the different microphones, you can really come up with some unique tones, which is really cool. Now remember, that's on input one. So now if we go over to input two and change the patching scheme, let's put everything back at 12 o'clock and kind of see where we're at. And let's do the same kind of thing. Let's just hear what the difference is. And this is the high output, so we should get some more some more oomph here. We can use the main output volume to compensate. So again, by playing around with the EQ and flipping around between the different microphone types, again, you can get a wide variety of different tones by using um, input two. Let's try input. That was input one as well. I'm sorry, guys. Let's go over to input two. I clicked on the wrong button here. Okay, so that was input one with a different patching scheme. So again, different sounding than what we did over here. We patched the channels a little bit differently this time. Okay, so let's uh, now let's go over to input two. My bad here, and let's try that. So let's put everything back at 12 o'clock. And again, you can play with the combination of these things forever. Okay, let's see what we got with everything at 12 o'clock. And then we'll cycle through some presets and then we'll end this video here. So now we are on input two. Let's start with the valve mics. So really cool. So by cranking up the loudness too and kind of pegging it all the way, again, you get a nice, a really nice breakup sound. And again, you can change the combination of, of how you want to blend the microphones together. And again, it's just a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, emulation of this particular amp. This amp is known to have that nice kind of warm, some people would say dark, but I think it's more of a warm, creamy sound. Again, it's pretty bass heavy. So I tend to back off some of the bass, especially if you're mixing this in with a bass guitar like we are. So let's cycle through some presets and let's just see what we got. So that was the default. You know, we'll start off with some, what's called blues picking, which is the dynamic mono. Um, version and what I'll do is I'll just as this, the loop is playing I'll just kind of cycle and step down through some presets and just give you a, a flavor for what they came up with as far as as far as presets go
So there is just maybe maybe half of the presets that we've gone through. There's a whole bunch of them here. Um, so as you can see, you have a lot of different choices. So again, this is a wonderful plugin, just like the Silver Jubilee. It's got its own special character. It is an accurate representation of what this actual amp sounds like. I do have some experience with it without sitting it side by side in the same room. Can you say it's a dead on emulation? Uh, I don't know who's to say, but in the context of a mix, I'll tell you what, this thing sounds fantastic. And as I said in the last video, Marshall and Softube and UA are the first company of all the guitar emulations that are out there that I've personally used. And again, this is just my opinion. I know there's some other great stuff out there and I think I've used all of them uh, pretty much. And they all sound okay. And again, in the context of a mix, all those other products, Guitar Rig and Amplitude and all those other ones, they're, they're passable. Um, but they always, to me, always lacked um, a little bit of something and I don't know what that something is a little bit of bite a little bit of growl it just never sounded it always sounded a little too thin a little too buzzy to me um and this is the first uh set of of emulations that I've heard um that I personally have used that I say boy this sounds like a real amp um and when you're using it in the unison technology uh way with uh, a universal audio apollo um and you're actually playing it it feels like a real amp. It reacts like a real amp. It, it acts, it reacts, uh, you know, just like a, a real amp would when, when you change your picking dynamics or when you roll off the volume of your guitar, it behaves very, very accurately to what a real amp would be. And so um, I think they've done a great job here. And again, I'm a big fan of Universal Audio. Anyone that watches my YouTube channel knows that. Um, and this is why, because I just think they make the best vintage type plugins and emulators that you can find. I mean, there's other great companies out there. I've owned, I own some other things as well, but if I had to pick my favorite out of everything that I use, 99% of all the plugins that I use, whether it's compressors, EQ, so on and so forth, the universal audio. And now for guitar, um, I'm going to be using this a whole lot, um, because it is, it is great. It sounds amazing to me. Hopefully it does to you too. Um, you can go out and check out other YouTube uh, stuff. And if you have a universal audio system, you can always download this for 14 days for free and play around with it. The, the 1962 Blues Breaker combo has a much different sound than the Plexi, and it has a much different sound than the Silver Jubilee, um, obviously. And so if you like this kind of a tone, if you like this warm kind of a vintage Marshall classic sound, this is a great plugin to have, and I do highly recommend it. So I hope you enjoyed taking a listen to the Marshall 1962 Blues play Breaker plugin. Uh, for more training, concepts, tips, and techniques around everything home recording, please head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and check out what I got going on over there. And for more about my own mixing and mastering services, you can always head out to visionrecordingstudios.com. So until next time, this has been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will talk to you guys all soon. Take care.